So now that we're basically done with module one, we've looked at motion, we've looked at some basic control with waiting and repeating, uh, we've looked at using the pen to do some logo-like activities, I'm going to end with one more small task for you. On the right side of the screen right now, you should be able to see some code. Uh, in fact, I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger here so you can see it just a little more easily. Right, so here's some basic code that asks you to, uh, well, what I'm going to ask you to do is figure out what this code is doing. Look at this for a second, hit pause if you'd like, and look, and look at this code, and decide what this program is going to do when I run it. All right, so I gave you some time to pause it. I'm going to go ahead and give you the answer now. Let's look carefully. First of all, you should recognize the first five or six blocks here, right? The first five or six blocks are basic setup. Uh, this is my places, everybody, that says when the program is run, send the cat to the middle of the screen and pointed to the right. right? And then put the pen down so that we can do some logo, that we can do some drawing. And then you'll see something a little bit different. You'll see that I have two repeat blocks here. And one repeat block is inside of another repeat block. And so, sort of like you would do if you were looking at mathematics, in mathematics if we had m multiple parentheses, you'd start in the, in the innermost parentheses and work your way out. Well, we do the same thing here. We start in our innermost repeat block and we work our way out. So if you look at the innermost repeat block, we have a block, block that repeats four times and it moves 100 steps and turns 90 degrees four times. Well, that's pretty easy. We, we, we've, we've seen that block of code before. That's simply making uh, a square. So you notice that what it does is it makes a square and then it rotates 18 degrees and then it hits this outer loop and so it comes back around and it makes another square. So it's going to actually make 20 squares if we look at this. But each time it, between making a square, it turns a little bit. Uh, and, and these numbers may look weird to you, 20 and 18, and what do they have to do with each other? Well, let me first show you the, the results. So let me go back to full screen. By the way, a quick thing here, you notice that right on the border between the stage and the program, there's a little arrow here. If you're trying to show people code and you want to make the code a little bit bigger, you can collapse that screen temporarily. As I said to you earlier, the dimensions of this screen are still 480 by 360. It's just compressed it uh, down to a much smaller region. And that gives you a little bigger area for you to work with your code. Um, so let's, let's run this now and see what happens. So notice what we're doing. We're making 20 squares over and over and over again. And we turn 18 degrees between each square. Actually, if you look carefully, if you look at 18 times 20, by the time this does it, this, it's turned 20 times 18 degrees. That's a full 360. So we've worked out, uh, we've made a circle of squares, basically. We got kind of a cool little spirograph going here, right? And so we can make different cool shapes by exploring with uh, multiple loops here. And so if we wanted to change this around, uh, maybe if we say, let's make a lot fewer of them. Let's only make eight squares. But since I want each square to, since I wanted to make a complete circle, let me go 45 degrees. Eight times 45 is 360. So when I run this, there's a neat kind of pattern, right? Doesn't even look like the spirograph anymore, but we got kind of a cool little pattern. Uh, I could do, you know, 16, double that and cut this in half. We could turn 22 and a half degrees. I can put a decimal in there. And so you get some really interesting shapes as you play with this. And so uh, something to kind of look at as we move forward with the spirograph.